Mr. Ingen. Okay. Uh, welcome to Advent of Code. Uh, today we are going to take a look at day 11. I actually solved it off camera, so pff, sorry. <laughs> um, but it's it's not much of a task. So, yeah, this is because I, I was like solving this competitively. No. Tomorrow night blue actually like almost my I'm not sure why there are two of them, but Oh, interesting. Now, my, I like my more. Okay, so I, I just make uh, it bigger. So the task for day uh, 11 was monkey business. Uh, and the idea is you have several monkeys, like three or eight or something like that. And you have your items. Each item has a cost. And basically uh, each monkey in turn like goes through all of its items, uh, which is a number, each item is a number, uh, applies some expression to it. Like in this case, it's e each monkey's expression is different. In this case, it's alt multi multiply 19, right? Um, so it, it gets a number, then it divides by three, uh, that's part of condition, uh, and the given number is checked, tested, divisible by 23. Right, and if it's true, it throws to one monkey. It's false. It throws to another, and this number—not this number, but the result of all these operations—gets uh, appended to the, the the specified monkey list. In this case, so monkey number two, for example, if it was divisible by twenty-three. And uh, but, well, condition is different. Uh, device test condition is different. Operation is different. So everything is different for each monkey. Uh, you run this procedure like for 20 for 20 turns 20 rounds uh, round is when each monkey goes through each of its items and you you see how many items has each monkey process, processed uh, the two most active monkeys you select them multiply the number of times and you get the answer right so that's called monkey business so the, the one of the part of this task is that condition is like this, in this form, which means it's a tricky to parse, kind of. And because of that, I actually resorted to just, I, I just retyped it. So this is a sample, and basically you see items 79, 98. It's the same as like here, I just copied it from here. Operation is like lambda function right here test is also divisible by 23, it's like, like this. Uh, pass and fail is like which to which monkey to pass and to which monkey to, to pass if it fails. And inspect is just a counter for inspections. And uh, like uh, I made a decision to not write a parser because puzzle input is pretty limited. It's just eight monkeys, right? So I'd probably spend more time writing parser than um, copying this uh, by hand into this. But I, I, I feel like I made the right decision. But uh, I, I want to try to write, write a parser actually. Like I want today to try use Instaparse, for example, and try to write a parser for it. So we'll see how it goes, but hopefully it works. Uh, but let's go through solution first. Okay, so uh, how we, how do we do this? So basically round is you take state, the state is this basically, uh, like state of all monkeys, um, range count state and uh, I also have like a round uh, function for round for one specific monkey. Like this is for all monkeys from zero to max monkey. This is for one monkey, right? And for one monkey, basically you take state, you take items of that monkey. Uh, basically we, we extract them here, all the keys here. Okay. Uh, and what you do is for each item you apply operation. Then you apply reduce stress. Uh, which is in our case is just 
Now, in our case, is divided by three. It's basically this is the extra operations that you apply after monkey applies its operation. And the only difference between the first and the second part of the task is this operation. So the, it was quote by three uh, initially, so basically divide by three without remainder. Um, but then I abstracted this away. Right? Then I increase the number of inspects for this monkey. I remove the, um, this item from the front of the list. Then I run a check on that item, and if it passes, I update the monkey that is like pass, number pass, and other items of that monkey, otherwise update them to fail. And this is pretty straightforward, like idiomatic closure, so nothing like nothing tricky is going on here. It's pretty beautiful, actually. So maybe I would uh, even put this like on a single line. Uh, yeah, it's pretty beautiful. And you run this like the, the way it works, like we bind this reduce stress function. Uh, use iterate, uh, which is, let me run this and connect. So we can have, um, iterate is basically take x and function and return a sequence of applications. So it's like x, f of x, f of f from f of x. F from F from F at X from X uh, stuff, stuff like that. So and, and we need basically a twenties operation, right? So it's also very nice that closure has this function. Uh, another way to do this is probably reduce with range twenty, but this is fine as well. Then we only keep inspects uh, sort by minus, which is a trick to basically make a reverse sort. Um, Take two, so we need two maximal uh, inspects and multiply them, right? So that's it. And if you run, run it, you get this number for example, this number for result, so that's all nice and dandy. Okay, so very straightforward. I did it, actually you can see, um, Somewhere you can see how fast did I solve it. No? No, no, no wait. Uh, okay, so <laughs> somewhere you can see. How can I see my stats? But my, my point is it was pretty fast, okay? Oh yeah, personal stuff here. Okay, yeah, uh, day 11, well, not pretty fast, but it was 21 minute, minutes, uh, which gave me 663 third place, which is okay, I guess. The best I did before was 1,100, so 1,100, which is long. And you can see part two is similar and much smaller, but there was a trick to part two actually. So the way we work was working here is we basically we do the separations like multiply by 13, right? And then there is reduce stress operation, which is divide by three. Okay. Uh, and that kept all the numbers in check. Basically they never overflow along. Uh, in part two, this is removed, so you can't, you don't get to do that. And because of that, numbers start to grow like, like crazy, right? And you also have to run like a thousand operations uh, instead of 20, right? So no way you can calculate these numbers. I tried to use begins, uh, but no. <laughs> it was too, too big for begins, like it became too slow. I, I think I got to like to 50th step or something like that of, of a thousand, so uh, definitely no go. But then, uh, yeah, I struggled with it, obviously, uh, a lot, but then I realized that all the checks here are basically modulo something, and uh, these are prime numbers, so if we take all these prime numbers and multiply them and apply modulo operation after like after we do whatever we do here, it wouldn't make a difference for a test. And we don't need final numbers, we only need the amount of times item was passed. 
instead of like the item itself. So whether we divide it or not doesn't matter as long as checks or tests return the same number. So basically the part two is uh, this reduced stress operation is modular all the prime numbers. I think there is one extra, like 23 is extra, I think. This is needed for sample, like, yeah, it's used here, but not in data, but so, but yeah, it works. And then we run 10,000 operations and do the same exactly, and it works as well, right? Um, yeah, slightly longer because of thousand, but is this the right number? Yeah, it's the right number. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I struggled with it, but then I, I had the oh, Eureka moment, and I figured it out. Uh, so the problem was I, I kept, like, because part one was quad, and uh, they kind of all uh, division related, so I, I didn't notice that, and it wasn't working for me. Like, what's I'm doing wrong? And then it turned out I need to use mod instead of quad, so I, I messed this up, and because of that, my time for this is... 43 minutes and I like, yeah, I didn't capitalize on my initial success, unfortunately. Um, so, 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 uh, I was thinking that maybe we can do real quick here and parse, write a parser for this. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to try insta parse. And this seems like a nice opportunity to do so. Uh, Insta parts is has the most beautiful dependency any of them should have. Unfortunately, closure people ruined it. It's like. You know that, like you can't. You, you, you technically you can write it like this, but uh, it will complain. It's like you use no namespace, and this is like convention. Like if there is no no, no namespace, it means that name is a namespace. Uh, and m many libraries for using was using this convention. Like you see, an REPL here is also using a namespace and REPL. And to include an REPL, you just write this. But then they added like. Um, uh, a warning for this, uh, I don't know why, but that's unfortunate actually. Uh, okay, so let's uh, insert insta parse here. I'm not sure how like parse parser. Let's let's use the word parser, right? Um, Creating your first parser, and basically you need something like this, right? Uh, and this is what we are going to try. And the rule, uh, alternation, white space, or grouping. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. String terminal, ergx terminal. Oops, comment. Okay, so um, yeah, so what we want is how do we do it? Insta parser. Okay, uh, well, let's call it insta. And we probably need to restart and wrap all. Okay. Um, yeah, let's write it right here. Okay, so insta parser and. Well, let's use this as an example. Okay, so there's some parser, and how do we... Ah, we just apply this par... Okay. Def parser. Parser and then uh, template slurp your file. Day 11, right? So 
Go do this. Go do this. Uh, I guess it's an error, uh, which we don't want to see. So let's update it. And the way we update it is, well, we start with, this. it has to be capital. Or does it, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, let's start with capital. So, uh, well, monkeys is monkey star, right? Okay, and monkey equals. Okay, we have twenty percent remaining. I hope we. I can actually save this. Save the day. Hopefully, it will not break the stream. Okay. Uh, so it has word monkey, and then uh, MID, kind of right. And then like this. Yeah, yeah and pfft, we don't know what MID is, and MID is okay. I feel like starting items items equals they all have items, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's basically number um, comma number star right Starting items, number, comma, space, and number, star. This looks like correct, but uh, you know what? Uh, let's see if we can actually parse partially. So what what we want is parse stuff like this and count this out. Okay, so it seems to work. Um, hmm. Did I redefine this? Items number number number. Oh, okay, this is. Monkey, monkey, my D number, uh, item number, comma. I accidentally missed part of the stream, but wouldn't a regular expression be more convenient than parser combinators? Or is it for fun? Yeah, it's for fun. Uh, I just want, to, maybe. No, yeah, probably would be easier. Well, I, I kind of like how you write it here. Um, 
I'm just not sure what, what, what will I do with it after that, right? Uh, so basically operation is like this. And we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Items op. So operation is operation new equals old. Okay, so now we have either uh, plus or uh, star. Okay, uh, then we have a space and then we have either number the word old or a number. Okay. Um, okay, it seems to work, right? Let's keep two uh, items here for brevity. Operation op operation u equals salt star number three. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, let's let's leave it at that for now. And what I want is I want somehow to get to this, right? Let's see what we do with partial parses. There is also insta parses. Okay, so what does it do? Just returns. Okay. Um, but I like this kind of more or not. Oh, wait. What does this mean, token? So it's it, it's like skips it, right? Or what? So, like, I, I don't need strings. Okay, so you specify this like this. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah, like this. Like this. Okay, this this is a slightly better, right? So this only gives us what we need. Seems like we need this. We don't need this. We kind of need this. Okay, so monkeys, monkey, MID, um, huh. MID number zero. Okay. Items, item number 85. Is there a way to skip this like level, like items? I don't need items. Well, I need items, but I don't need like item. Well, I can put number here, right? Then in this case, it will be like items. Yeah, I guess this is, this is needed. But, well, MID kind of is kind of needed 
items not that much, but I want to give names, like, okay. Um, Ah, transforming the tree. Well, since some kind of tree structure, what do you do with it from there is up to you. It's delightful, easy to manipulate trees and closures. There are wonderful tools available online, zippers match and tree seek. But even without those tools, most tree manipulations are straightforward to perform in closure with recursion. Since tree transformation is already so easy to perform in closure, there is not much point in building a sophisticated transformer but instead of bars. I did include one function is transform that addresses the most common transformation needs. Take some map from tree text to transform function. A uh, transform function is defined as a function that takes the children of the tree node as inputs and return a placement node. In other words, okay. Uh, aha, aha, yeah, this is what we need actually. Um, Right, so basically we, we want to take number and return parse long, kind of. Is this correct? Yeah. No? String. Oh, yeah, because you can do this. Uh, yeah, we mess this up. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Um, then what do we do? Maybe, um, maybe we take monkey, right? And return a ray map. No, because op is not an array map. Okay. No, wait, oh, this is strange. Um, Actually, yeah, no. Huh. So before this, it would be items. Okay, so basically, if we want items, what if I do this? Huh. Where is no okay? Hmm. Okay, this is uh, what we do with items. Uh, MID, yes, uh, with op. Well, with op, we can do actually a fan. Uh, we take appearant and what do we take? A value. Right, and we want to return a function of x. Well,
Yeah, it's tricky because uh, value could be um, either the string old or number, right? Well, fn x basically uh, so if it was plus and plus if it's star it will be star uh, x um, Otherwise, kind of like this. Okay, so we we parsed. Uh, yeah, but we need um, it's like this actually. We don't want to. Uh -huh, so we have op, which is op mid. And monkey, and, and now I'm not sure what's huh. Yeah, and now monkeys is just just this. Well, it kind of works. Um, kind of annoying. <laughs> Um, kind of annoying, kind of annoying, but what can you do? Um, yeah, it's definitely faster to write what I, I wrote, but this transform is nice, uh, I would say. I think this should be, I feel like Yeah, remap wouldn't work. Let's do one more. This is a test. So op we have test equals uh, boom boom test divisible by number, right? And the way we handle this is test and test equals zero mod percent and huh what? We don't have test here, actually. And this is because I forgot. Let me... New line is basically uh, this. Slash n and then two white spaces. Test and we can remove this. Okay, so we now has test 13 and we can actually, now we can't, 
So now I don't understand, like mid items op test. It should work actually, I'm not sure why it doesn't. Oh. Maybe we also just do this, right? So we don't care how much. Okay, um, now I have no idea why this doesn't work. Uh, map literal must contain an even number of forms, but what is map literal? I'm not sure. So this works. This doesn't. Oh, this works now again. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what changed. And what we need as well is what? We have test, we have if true, condition basically, right? Condition cont uh, if true or false which is important. Throw to monkey number. Okay, so we don't need this. Um, this as well and actually there are two conditions okay. yes uh, now I see what you're talking about because condition has this uh, we actually want count case while true pass id false fail id and we probably want um, we also have inspects here so we just add it here and we get inspect zero and item ID zero items blah blah op it kind of works kind of works uh, can this parse our input um, What do I have about white space? Okay. Uh, 
Well, actually, you know what? Maybe like this. Expecting a new line. This is probably the last one, right? Yes. Yay! Um, but yeah. Let's uh, transform. Sorry, the transform function here. Um, transform. So we parsed it. Yay! Uh, kind of cool, I would say. I would say, I would say, I would say, right? Um, let's see if we can make it work with, uh, with this. Okay, so sample one is gonna be, actually, we're gonna copy this. If we can make it work with a parse function. That's what I want to check. Okay, uh, sample one and data is this. Okay, uh, reduce stress, blah, blah, and parse. We all different parse. Uh, S and it's gonna be insert transform parser like this. Okay, um, like this, blah, 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 blah. Um, parse, parse, parse. So basically, parse data, right? Yeah, it seems to work. Cool, it seems to work. I'm not sure what like number new line. You can probably use plus here. And here we probably should use star, right? Yeah, and we comment this out. Yay! Isn't it cool? I think it is very cool, actually. So let's commit this, I guess. And you know what? I also feel like templates that I use, oh, I probably don't need this. I do need this, um, but what I'm missing is Uh, a check to to check that date is parsed actually. Okay, um, yeah. Let's commit this as well and say use insta parse for year 2018, day 22. Okay, that's uh, that's it, I guess. Uh, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, I still... I 
And you can put this also in brackets, which means... Okay... Yeah, that's another tip, probably. Um, nice. Nice. No, Instaparse is cool. Maybe I will use it. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh